Good evening, lovely tubers. White Mexican back again for another video tonight. Gonna be a plethora of stuff I'm gonna be reviewing today. It's kind of random. Most of the effect monsters are gonna revolve around, around drawing. You guys probably know by now if you've seen my other videos, I'm a big advent fan about the potential behind turboing through your deck. Um, these aren't necessarily turbo cards, most of them are just one ofs, but um, you guys kind of see as the video progresses here. So the first card is going to be Ultimate Rare, Print of Chainsaw Insect. Fun story about this, back in the day, the white Mexican used to play this beater deck with like multiple copies of this, and Fusler Dragon, and Goblin Attack Force with three skill drains, and I think I played Macro Cosmos, because uh, it was at three back then too. It was really fun times, old school formats. Um... This card has um, definitely been uh, pretty chewed up in the market. Unlimiteds are all the way up to $10. And there's no first editions on the first page. Only two pages of this left. And this card it, it goes to about $20 for uh, the first first editions. Um, just wanted to mention this card because if you have it, I would definitely sell it. Um, it's just increased in value. And the only reason why, it's not really a good card. The only time you'd ever play this if we got skill trained back to three and you wanted to make yourself a beater deck but this is a really old card there's probably better cards you can play now um, than this but um it's just people have bought it out it's been chewed up on the market and that is really the only reason why it's uh, at a 20 20 price point now next card is going to be Digin, presider of rituals there's the original print rares from stardust overdrive let's go ahead and take a look at the super rare prints from Secret Forces. This is a fantastic set. There's a lot of cards in here. I think have great potential and it's a very, very cheap set. This this is also uh, the Dawning set. We got the Genesis of the um, what are those one ritual monsters cards? Um Brian, uh, Necross. Necross, I'm sorry. I just had a brain dump there. I don't know why. Necross, yes. The Genesis of Necross came. Secret Rare Prince from that. So, and Silver, they're still pretty cheap, too. So, I'd go check that out. Uh, moving on here. Oh, sorry. You can just read the effect. It's just a cool generic uh, ritual card. I never really took the time to read this card's effect, but it's got a pretty cool effect. It's pretty unique. Um, and then the, the biggest thing is the second effect, though. So, the ritual is someone that you use as this card's material. It basically has a, uh, a built-in uh, mass sorcerer effect to draw every time it destroys ones, which is uh, really, really cool. And this is just pennies on the dollar, extremely cheap, five pages left of this. Next card is going to be Witch of the Black Rose. This definitely isn't the first time that I've reviewed this. I'm an Advent fan of this card's artwork. It's just fantastic. Of course, there is, I want to say either... Three or at least one other print as an ultra rare, just a normal ultra rare. Um, of course, is the ultimate rare drawing from Absolute Power Force, and this card is—it's not really good. They used to play it back in the day, like a long time ago. I don't really remember what deck it is. It just has—it's an old school ultimate rare, and it has fantastic, cutesy, girly anime artwork. And you know, it's—it's it's a dark level four spellcaster, seventeen hundred attack. So you know, it's got the stats to go with it. Unlimiteds again. If you're gonna invest in ultra rares, unless it's if it it's a if it, it's a core set ultra rare that comes in first edition, always get the first editions, and it, they're about eight dollars. Here's two lightly plates for eight dollars, and then there's only two pages left of this. I really don't think that eight dollars is that bad for this card. Most because of the reasons that I said. Um, it's old. It's an ultimate rare, and it's got fantastic artwork. So. And there's not a lot on the market either, so I'm actually debating on picking these up because um, I don't think that they're going to stay at $8 for much longer. But moving on. Royal Firestorm Guards. So there's a gold print here from 2009. 2008, 2009 had phenomenal gold, gold cards. They actually did gold cards right back then. They actually produced them, and they are actually gold cards, and they were really, really nice. They just had like a hint sprinkle of gold on the top they look really really nice they weren't completely like overboard with the gold it was really great um so this is very nice but let's go ahead and look at the original prints a secret rare dawning from gladiator's assault an extremely old set uh really cool set and this card is just phenomenal it has phenomenal artwork it's a level four fire pyro 
And 1,700, 1,200 for stats, you know, not too impressive. But just in general, it's fire, it's light level 4, and it's generic. You don't have to use it with, um, you know, the volcanic stuff or any of this. You can, um, but you can, you know, who knows? Pyro is kind of a, a deck that kind of got shafted, or an archetype, or, you know, you know, a monster type that got shafted, because I don't remember there ever being, like, a really big blowout archetypes that support this um, archetype. And anyway, uh, this card's really expensive. It, um, unlimiteds are $50, and for a near mint lovely play, there's only three listings, and it goes from 50 to 55 it's kind of funny how uh the first edition is only five dollars more like i mean this is expensive i wouldn't buy this but i mean if you were gonna buy this obviously you'd pay the five dollars more and get the um the first edition and then it you know goes to 86 so this card is just completely chewed up on the market there's hardly any and uh this is just a fantastic card in general on like all fronts it's just got an amazing effect it has really cool artwork and it's an old school secret rare next card is me cam uh serenity of gusto and there's cool prints only two prints there's a hidden arsenal five secret rares which are going for a couple bones but let's go ahead and take a look at not only is it dual terminal but it's a super rare hollow coil dual terminal any kind of ultra rare or super rares in dual terminal rarity just looks so fantastic they're gorgeous cards and you'll notice the majority of these monster cards are kind of random like Supporting cards for different uh, deck archetypes, but then they all kind of have like the draw one effect But it's just I just think it's cool. It's kind of just like the flavor of the video that I decided to make for this so um, This is about three ish four dollars and there's only two pages left of this so there is that Next is going to be magical musketeer wild. I love magical musketeers. I have the whole deck of max rarity and it's really cheap and easy to get the deck max rarity, and it's just such a fun deck. And I think it has potential to get better with new support, potentially. And it's already really good with what we have. And there's been the um, the, the the Link 2 uh, card is really good that, that came out fairly recently. Uh, this card's super cheap. Um, again, it's a solo print, it's super rare, so it's not surprising. Um, but this is the, an amazing... I, uh, get this deck like even if you don't like this deck it's a really fun deck and it's really cheap and i think it has potential to go up because it is such an easily for the most part easily easily piloted deck and it's a really really fun deck and it's one of the very few um theme decks that is light mostly theme decks are dark so it's interesting how they're light it's pretty unique arima is going to be the next card so this is a solo print super rare from the structure deck of course and uh, this has just got a really cool effect, and um, obviously it's a, dark, a layer a layer support card here. Um, it's really cheap, and you know under a dollar without factoring shipping. Five pages left of this, so that's just something I wanted to cover really quick. Next card is gonna be Fujin Rasuda, Arasuda, and we have the 2014 Mega Tins, which are like a bone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the ultra rares from the original print Legacy of the Valiant. And this card's pretty cool. I, I really, like, I don't remember. I I, I want to say when I was in Japan, I started to pick up this archetype to pick up Bujins. I really like Bujins a lot. They're really, really cool. I normally don't like Beast Warrior and, like, Warrior Beast and all that type decks. But their artworks are really cool. They have some really cool effects. And there's some pretty cool plays you can do this. And this is another relatively cheap, like, deck core. The only thing that's kind of pricey is, like, the Ultimate Rare Yamato's, because that's, like, the beast part of the deck. Um, but other than that, everything else is, like, relatively uh, not that expensive. And it's a really fun deck. And uh, I personally started building it myself, and I need to kind of get back into, like, completing it, because it's a really it's a really cool deck. Um, anyway, here's the effect. You can pause the video and read that if you want. This is going for about two-ish dollars when you want to factor in shipping for the original print first editions. And there's three pages left of this. Moving on here, Bountiful Artemis. So I am a giant anti-meta player. I really, really love anti-meta builds, but um, I also like counter fairies, which is like a variant of anti-meta. I really, really love counter fairies. And uh, this card is, you know, it's made for counter fairies, um, essentially. 
And uh, I got a plethora of commons. We have Dark Revelations 4, which I'm not a fan of, of any reasons. You know, I, again, I don't want to spend too much time, but I just, I really do not, uh, I don't really go for the Dark Re Revelations um, being, you know, so expensive for, you know, not that high of rarities. But then, of course, we have the very amazing, very beautiful Ultimate Rare from OTS Pack 1, which is really cool because this was... A transition set when they changed from um, I think before this was Astral Pack or something I'm not sure but um, this looks gorgeous I actually I think I have either two play sets or I know I have at least a play set of this card I love this card it looks amazing and it's ultimate rare it's only $20 um, and then it will quickly kind of goes up after that there's only one at $20 so this card is slowly starting to go away only two pages left but this one for 20 bones I think is a really solid pickup as you can see it's already starting to increase and again, it's an ultimate rare tournament pack card, and um, it counter fairies just chew this up like crazy. Next is going to be Destiny Hero Celestial. Not a lot of options here. Uh, there is this ultra rare, this common. Obviously, everyone's going to want to go for the secret rare um, out of Destiny Soldiers, which is getting pretty up there in age now. And... It's pretty expensive. It's, uh, for what it is, it's got a really cool effect. You know, if you're a hero, Destiny Hero player, you know, it's a pretty cool card. Uh, heroes always have just a plethora of really diverse support. It's pretty amazing. And it's about $10 for the first edition prints for this highest rarity. And there's five pages uh, for this card. Next card is going to be Star Eater. There's the common originating from Cosmo Blazer, but that's not really, you know, rendered kind of useless because there's the super rare Donnie from Astral Pack 5. Really like the artwork on here. I like the French beret looking thing and you know the the star thing here. And um, it's pretty cool how you can use it as a level five. You can augment it to a level five or a level four, and then of course you're just gonna get that plus one when you summon your XYZ monster. And this card is really, really cheap. It's like under a dollar, barely a dollar if you factor in shipping, and there's three pages left. So um, it's really cool um, that this is so cheap. And I just think for its price, it's a really good card. And it's cool that they came out with a hollow foil print for it. Next is going to be Molten Zombie. So the only reason I decided to feature this card is because if you're playing a deck where you want to summon multiple monsters that you know draw cards when you summon. But unfortunately, this card pretty much got rendered inferior because if you read this effect here... When it's special summon from the grave, specifically the grave, uh, you get to draw one card. I thought it was really surprising how this isn't once per turn because there's some pretty like busted effects and combos. I'm sure that this can pop off to draw like tons of cards. But again, this isn't really going to be the um, the ideal choice because there is Sacred Crane, which if we go into the original prints here, I mean, this in my in my opinion, this would be the best uh, version of the Invasion of Chaos. Very infamous. Generation 1 core set, got the cast monsters in this, very, very great history, infamous history with this set. Um, but this card, it just needs to be special summon. It doesn't designate specifically from a graveyard, and it's the exact same stats as this. 1600 attack, 400, so I don't really know what Konami was thinking. They pretty much just made this card useless, and it came out of the same set, too. They both came out of Invasion of Chaos. So, um, obviously, this is going to be way better. The artwork is a little bit cheesier in this one, um, but it is a light, though, so that's kind of cool. And uh, let's go ahead and see some first editions. They're going to be, like, well under a dollar, and there's five pages left. Um, not a lot of stacks, unfortunately, so this is going to be probably a, an add-in, unless you guys uh, can um, find find something to stack in. Spygal Misty is going to be the next, so still, this is a, Raging Tap is kind of getting up there in age now, and this is still apparently a solo print ultra rare, so that's really cool. The artwork's really cool in this. I really do like the artwork. I like her suit, and you know, she's just a, whatever, business attire kind of gal, and uh, it's not really so much the effect, but the sheer fact that this is a solo print and I never played Spirals, so I don't know if this is like a really popular um, card to play or not. But it's really cheap, and it's a solo print, and there's five plus pages. So I, I don't really know. I just I felt like I just felt a nudge to feature this card. 
Next is going to be Galaxy Cleric. Unfortunately, you don't have a hollow print of this. This came from Soul Fusion, so not too long ago, just as a common. And, of course, the Gold Star Gold Tins, we got a, another common reprint. It's kind of interesting that they... They should have made this at least a super rare because 2019 they're all hell bent on changing up the rarities and everything being different. Um, but this is a really fantastic card. So of lately I've been kind of doing some research and kind of getting interested in Galaxy stuff of late because like all of their stuff just looks so cool. Like all their artwork is so cool and it's like spacey and um, you know we have the OG Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon that comes like Ultimate and Ghost and looks super sexy and it's pretty great. Um, anyway, this card is just pretty cool. I think it's, it has pretty cool, um, dual prong effect, and I just kind of wanted to highlight it a little bit. First editions are, you know, not even a dime, so five plus pages on that card. Next is going to be Gemini Ints. So there's this common here, and then there's a secret rare from Premium Pack 1. This card is dirt cheap right now. Primary reason is because it's very, very situational. And uh, back in the day, this actually was a card sided against Dark World. Dark World used to be very, very predominant way, way, way a long time ago, like back in like 2012 or whenever it was when it came out. I uh, love that deck, by the way. It's probably one of my all-time favorite Yu-Gi-Oh decks is Dark World. But anyway, they used to side this out for uh, for Dark World to kind of do, do some disruptions. Really awesome artwork. I love the artwork, especially the background. The background is really dark and sinister. It's like this desolate world. Uh, you can't really see it, but it's very much a secret rare. It's got deep embedded secret rare form. It looks really, really nice. And uh, it's really cheap. It's like well under a dollar, about a dollar if you want to factor in shipping. And there's plenty on the market. So um, because of this card's price and its artwork and the sure fact that it's a secret rare from Premium Pack 1, which is like extinct now, um, I'm really surprised that there's so much on the market. Now granted, it's very, very situational and by no means is a good card right now. But does it have potential in the future? I mean, every card has the potential in the future for the most part, unless it just utterly sucks which there are some cards uh, that have been produced that just utterly suck. But moving on here, Masked Sorcerer. This is a really, really old card. So Dark Beginning saw a common and uh, Metal Raiders Rare were the original ones. So you may look at this card and it's like, okay, like its attack is low as hell. Like how are you ever going to get hit damage to draw off of a card? But... You know, back in the day, there was, like, Mage Power and United Stand and Axe of Despair and all this stuff to boost it up pretty quickly to get your hits and, you know, your draw power off. But even now, more so, in this day and age, uh, with me being anti-meta player myself, there is Moon Mirror Shield, which uh, you guys can look up that card. And uh, if you attach this to a Moon Mirror Shield, um, you're in business. And uh, it's kind of a slower combo, but... It's pretty cool. There's not a whole lot of cards that you know give you the ability to just kind of swing and plus. Um, and this artwork is it's kind of funky looking, but just the sheer fact that it's like Generation One, like Metal Raiders, was literally like the second core booster set in all the TCG. So this card's ancient. And see, so no first editions on the first page or the second page or the third page okay this is getting a little crazy um okay so it's about two ish dollars about two ish dollars if you factor in shipping not a lot of stacks so a little bit harder to get but then again this card is ancient so that comes at no surprise um okay so really quickly i was actually going to put this um at the end of the video but since my tabs are kind of mixed up i'm just going to go over this so everyone knows that the new lost art promotion um, sets are coming out and this is significant because I lived in Japan for two years and I invested heavily in the original uncensored artwork in um, confidence that Konami would not have the balls to actually start um, bringing out the uncensored artwork of these cards. More specifically for like the really violent cards and the sexually suggestive cards. Now we've had lost art promotion for a while. You can see here 
I just did a quick search um, here. You can see, you know, all these different cards. But none of them have been really great. The only good one that's really impressed me is kind of Monster Reborn, just seeing great value. Um, but even more so, it has been Foolish Burial. They've made, like, the stupidest decisions, like, the cheesiest, like, little alterations of uh, cards that they've chosen until now. Um, Monster Reborn and Foolish Burial, like, were the only two that they even got close to being hot sells. Um, for this Lost Art promotion, but um, fortunately, unfortunately, they actually did it, much to my surprise, um, unfortunately, I'm going to lose a lot of money um, in, not all, because there's still a lot of cards that haven't been uncensored here in the TCG, but Dark Magician Girl, particularly this version, Harpy's Queen and Harpy Chandler, um, more so the Dark Magician, because, I mean, come on, it's Dark Magician, she's, you know, on you know the number one list for so many different players um but they did it they finally uh, and you know don't get me wrong there's tons of different versions um that have, they have yet to release yet so that's kind of cool maybe we'll get them maybe we won't this is one of the cooler versions um, in my opinion and that they are releasing it you know with the, the bust in the chest and the black star magic um pendant is really cool um both of the harpies cards is a pretty cool choice too um so this is a really big deal, and again, I don't want to spend too much, you know, I don't want to run my trap too much on this, because everyone knows about this, and everyone's excited for Dark Condition Girl. Um, get this. This is literally, like, this is going to be worth so much money, because Dark Condition Girl, because it's such a popular anime, you know, cutesy anime girl card, um, but that the sheer fact that, you know, look at the uncensored versions, and they're, like, ungodly expensive here for, you know, some certain prints. This is going to be worth so much money because the Lost Art promotions, they go, they come and go, and then they're gone like forever. They don't really last. So go in, and everyone is going to be like, it's going to be it's gonna be hard. I'm not going to lie. I really, really hope that Konami pumps the hell out of these and really mass produces these, um, more so Dark Magician, and especially even the, the, the Harpies cards too, because it's going to be so competitive to get these cards, because everyone's going to want to get these cards, because we look at like these really crappy other versions that they chose to print to uncensor, and it's like not even a big deal, like, you know, Call of the Han and like a Crucifix, uh, Zodia, it just has like a triangle in the background. Like they made like all these stupid choices. Again, the only good choices they made was Monster Reborn and Foolish Burial. Um, but this is a big deal. So if you guys can, I really, really recommend, I don't even care if you guys spend $90 or whatever, get three of these. I'm going to try like hell to get these because these are going to go up insane very, very quickly. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, moving on to um, the last few cards here. So, uh, Star Seraph Sovereignty. So, there's a combo between this and Scepter, where you can basically special one draw cards, all that stuff. Let you guys read the text here. Um, I don't remember which one it is that you summon first. I think it's... Um, the scepter but anyway so both of them got reprints ultra rares they were solo prints dying from world superstars until dual power came out and then they got these ultra rare prints which are really not anything um scepter's still really cheap too uh look at sovereignty right here sovereignty's a little bit more it's you know barely a dollar these actually went down these were a little bit more a couple bones for a while but there's only four pages left um i was just really thinking about this because there was a time when i was running this engine in my herald deck i love perfect herald um, I'm just very, very decks in general, and um, this this was an engine I used for a time. I don't use it anymore, but um, it's it's a very good. A lot of of Harold players um, run this engine, and um, this is really cheap and this is really good. Like you don't have to play Harold to play this. It's just a generic, pretty good draw power and um, swarmer card. And World Superstar is a really great set. I really check it out. There's a lot of cool Prismatic Secret Rares that came out of that set. So, same thing. Uh, Scepter is, you know, roughly around the same price, a little bit, you know, cheaper. And uh, there's, there's plenty on the market. So, uh, they're, they're just really cheap. So, you know, if you don't have some, I, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't, you know, everyone should have a, 
you know, potentially a, a place like it's so cheap and, you know, these, these cards have potential to, you know, get popular, and especially being Prismatic Secret Rares, they could definitely go up in value, which they have in the past. Moving on, uh, Royal Magical Li Library. Um, you know, there's a plethora of common reprints, but we want to talk about the super rare reprint from Tournament pa OTS Pack 7. This card has fantastic artwork. I love, like, the magician hoods, the little library, the little, like, magic orbs, and the little whatever platforms. It's just really good artwork. Perfect stats. Level 4, light, spellcaster. Um, you know, it's got a fat ass. It's got 2k ass. And its effect is just, it's it's not even a once per turn. Um, yeah, this didn't get it right. It's not once per turn. And there's a lot of decks where you can just, you know, combo and play this off and draw and draw and draw. And it's, it's, it's really good it's really good depending on the situation it's really good and it's got a it's got a lot of stuff going for it um it's about three dollars it's about three dollars and there's only three pages left um i bought a shit ton of these because this card was so cheap it was like a dollar fifty cents for the longest time now it's slowly starting to trickle up and there's not that many in the market and i just think that this is going to go up Number 10, Illuminite. So, I have talked about this before. This card's really cool. Uh, for the longest time, this was dirt cheap, and it's still pretty dirt cheap for an ultimate rare. Um, $5 for the first, first edition here. There's five pages on the market. Um, I never really thought about it before because it always just kind of seemed like a, a one for one. But if you're playing a deck where you want to pop off effects in the grave, it pretty much turns into a plus one at that point. And the last card that I wanted to feature here is going to be Time Thief Redoer. So a original print was from Savage Strike as a common. We got a super rare reprint from OTS 12. I didn't even know that this came out of OTS 12. I'm not very uh, versed in these OTS packs, but it can't, apparently it came super rare. And... Um, it took me a while. I had to kind of, it's kind of got funky wording. I had to read it a couple times over. Maybe I'm just like really slow or something, but I had to read this like three or five times before I finally understood exactly like all the, the um, angles to this effect. Pretty good, pretty diverse, and it's it's standard. It's uh, generic, just two level four. So anyone can play this, which is what really caught my attention to this card because I think it does have a really fantastic effect. Um... And this being, you know, the how only hollow foil that we have, and it's, you know, a little over two dollars if you factor in shipping. And there's five pages left.